we want teams that are mutually accountable. Yes. We want teams that we can trust each other. Right. And that everyone's open and humble, but also confident mm -hmm. and skilled. And and we want that. And we want to create an environment that 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 recognizes that and encourages that. Yes. So any final tips you have, my friend, on on going back to practical? If we've got uh, uh, leaders today listening to this, which I'm sure are out there saying, hey, I, I like what those guys are talking about. Yeah. I want to take something back to my team. Uh, I'm listening to this on the weekend. My team meeting is Monday. What's a starting place? So um, I'm about to put myself out there. I'm about to make a bold statement. I, I see a blog series coming on <laughs> practical accountability, but I've got some good news. The first two pieces of the formula uh, are actually out there. We've written on this. So there is a, there's some po there's a post out there on the Leadership Foundry website on practical clarity. Yep. There's another post out there on effective business meetings. So if you're out there thinking today, I need to put this into place right away, you can at least get started with some good content on the Leadership Foundry website. I know you and I have done podcasts on these topics. Yeah. So I think there's there's enough out there to get you started. And then I think if you think about some of the past conversations we've had about what every leader should be doing right now, ask, listen, and invest, really understand what is it that your team brings to the table in terms of personal ownership? Why do I have some leaders that never speak up? Why, do, why does John and Susan and, and, and Mike never put their name next to anything, but Bill and Ray are always willing to jump in? So you've got to you know, take a look at your team. So the reason that you and I are even having this discussion is you and I have just been having so many in-depth, candid conversations with clients lately where they are just overwhelmed and befuddled by, how do I improve accountability? Yep. So what we have been doing, hence this conversation, is helping them get super proud practical. And that's why I think the formula and our related conversation is really going to be helpful. So if you're a leader out there thinking, I want to get started right away, listen to this podcast again, take a few notes, go look at some of the content that we've got out there. It's a starting place. But I do think that what we have shared today is a good place to begin. And if we can help you, let us know. Yeah, agreed. So I'll, I'll add a point of view around this too. So sure. as you were talking, I think the good news in this is as you already hinted, this ties into a lot of other conversations we have, mm -hmm. both with our clients when we do leadership boundary sessions, but even on the podcast. Right. It even ties into author editor. Yes. Because I think so often leaders think I must own accountability. You must nurture and foster accountability. Mm -hmm. The owning of accountability is down at that individual ownership level, that personal ownership level, which mm -hmm. is part of your formula. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get our teams to be authors so we can be editors. Yes. The, and the traits of the author is they take ownership, they show initiative, they display critical thinking. Mm -hmm. So the way you activate that, so you can activate the author-editor dynamic in these team meetings by simply having everyone go around and say, what's everyone going to do between now and the next meeting? Mm -hmm. Simple question. But that forces them to take ownership, forces them to take initiative, and forces them to do critical thinking. Um, and if you don't like their response, like if their response is, well, I'll just show up to the next meeting. Well, let's talk about that. That's yes. an opportunity for you to edit. Yes. So when our teams are talking, we're editing. When our teams are silent, we're authoring. And there's a tendency now for us to feel like we have to own everything. There's so much stress in the economy right now, stress on our leaders right now. Mm -hmm. um, and they have to feel like they have to own it. Well, that's the path to burnout. And that's not the path to a high performing team. That's winning an MVP, not building a world championship. Right. And you and I are all about helping our leaders build world championships because we've seen plenty of teams with MVPs with losing seasons. Yes. And let's don't be one of those. <laughs>